Oh, baby. It's not really as done as it looks, but I just wanted to see how it's gonna look. And damn, she looking good, son. Well, welcome back people of the internet, DIY guys, and the build continues. I know it's been a little bit, so I've been back to this, but stuff at my work picked up, so the day job becomes for YouTube, because YouTube basically only buys me Big Macs and Happy Meals. That's about how much money it gives me. So I'm doing these videos, I'm doing them just for you guys, and just for my fun. So today, let's talk about setting your pickup height, which we can't on this guy, because it's not adjustable, but I'll show you how to test it. And we're also gonna talk about this Windows tray, and one more cool thing. So if you look down here, we have a rear water bypass for the old small block Chevy or a Gen 1 for all you label hungry guys out there. But that's definitely gonna help cooling. Well, at least it's supposed to. And we'll explain more of that in the video today. All right, before we get to the video, this dog guaranteed will out 60 foot some of y'all's cars. She's gone! <laughs> get it, girl! <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so this pan right here did not give me much room at all for this windows tray. I had to actually notch out the tray and then bend this guy in to clear all this and cut a whole bunch back here else it was hitting on the edge right there. All kinds of stuff, but I managed to get the work because you definitely want a good windows tray in your vehicle. So I've already taken this this way. You can see where I had to notch it out. Look at that. I had to notch it out right there where these guys were hitting just on the edge. So I just kind of over notched it, but it works. So what I have right here is just some um, Play-Doh. You just tape off the bottom of your pickup, give it a nice little ball and what we're going to do, you got to make sure you put your pan gasket on there. You can measure and all that stuff, but I'm telling you right here, this Play-Doh stuff is the easiest way, fail safe, to know exactly how much clearance you got from the bottom of your pan to this guy right here. And then all you do is you take your old oil pan and you put it down like so. Now it's important to note that when you put it on here and you're rocking it back and forth, that remember, it's going to be a... a probably a little bit more tighter whenever this guy bolts down. So I'm just gonna, I don't wanna bolt it down and pre-crush pre any of this. So I'm just gonna put my weight on it like so. <clears throat> really get up on it. <clears throat> really get up on it. <clears throat> and I'm gonna say we're probably gonna be pretty darn close to the pickup height. Then you remove it. There we go. See how it's now compressed? So now we're gonna collect our old Play-Doh and we're gonna measure this. And you can see in the front, it's definitely a little short in the back. We're gonna do the smallest section right here and see what the smallest is. Uh, I've already done this, and this does have a little more height from the bottom of the pan. It's a little farther than what you use in stock pans, but this guy right here, we got a really, really deep guy right here. This is eight and a half inches deep. Plus, if you take the factor of this, it is a little over eight and a half inches and I'm running a standard volume oil pump so I really don't think that it being a little farther from the bottom is going to ever suck in I mean if it goes all the way down to here and I'm sucking in like you know air on the bottom of that pickup I think we have a problem somewhere else so if we take our old calipers and we measure this it is roughly almost a half an inch like when it bolts down, it's gonna be a little closer. But, you know, like I said, you know, there's only a couple of ways. This is not adjustable, one thing. And you have to use a specific, this pickup and was the pickup for this pump and all that other stuff is the ones that they said to use. It's, this is the one that they sell with the, with the pan. And I could go and I can go find a whole bunch of pans. I could spend more time and modify this, but I'm pretty certain we're gonna find out, but I'm pretty certain that we're gonna be okay. So that way, if I do a wheel stand and I bang the bottom of my pan, 
least it'll still suck in oil, right? This is a uh, six quart pan, including a filter. So let's just get a visual reference of how far the oil will have to go in before it'll have a problem. Now, a lot of times these guys are really deep like this is to help with cavitation, the stuff slinging off the crank, but that's why I always put a windows tray in these guys. So that way, by the time the oil drains down, you don't have any bubbles in it because there is, there is a chance if you don't put a windows tray in these, it'll aerate the oil and you'll have fluctuation problems. And I've used that windows tray, this vehicle right here and other ones, and it has always worked great. So I'm just gonna ride with this and not worry about it. Play-Doh, when they say age is two and up, they really mean it. I'm 43, still playing with the dough. <laughs> Now, before we talk about the rear water bypass on the old small block Chevy, we've got the LT1 here, and I'll explain to you why I set it up the way I set it up. So number one, on you know a Gen 1, you have to run the thermostat right here. On the LT1s, no water goes to the intake whatsoever. Different cooling system, but if you notice right here, this line goes to a line that goes to the back of the heads and then goes back into the radiator right here. But one thing you need to notice, this is a reverse cooling system. So the thermostat, it goes in the thermostat. It doesn't go out the thermostat like on a small block Chevy. So this is pumping, pushing right here. So this is closed. And this essentially is in the same location as this guy back here. So all this is under pressure. It will not go and move fluid out into the hedge, then down to the block until the thermostat right here opens up. I'm gonna put my um, coolant sensor on this side of the Gen 1 that is, and then right here is on the Gen 1 is gonna be the rear water bypass where it goes in, and then when your thermostat opens right here, it goes out to the radiator. So I'm gonna to have to snake this guy around this way, and I think that intake's gonna be a little higher than this one, so that way I can put the neck right here I have to take this guy, move it down here somewhere, make a bracket to come off one of these bolts. I'll mount my grounding um, point right here, somewhere in there, and redo it over here on the Gen 1. I know it's a little confusing, but there's a reason why all this is this way. Now, the reason why, this is actually an old dirt track trick. The dirt track guys, because what happens is when the water comes in on a Gen 1, it goes into your block, and there's all these holes right here in your head. So it goes into the block and then it feeds its way in here. Now, there's, this is the farthest section of the Gen 1s, right? So these cylinders usually run hotter because water is gonna take its quickest exit to the thermostat back to radiator, which is gonna be right here. So typically in these guys, what they found is the rear cylinders run hotter than the front cylinders. So what the dirt, old dirt track guys do, uh, if you have an intake that has these holes right here, because if you know on a small block Chevy head, these are ambidextrous. They can go this way or that way. So there's a hole here and a hole here. The intakes, gaskets, same way. So right here, just like the L21, we can plumb the rear water patches way, but the L21 has a spot in the very, very back of the head. The Gen 1, if you have an intake like this, you can take the water out here here, I'm going to take this off, be a little easier to, to explain. See, hole right there, hole right there, hole right there, hole right there. L21, there is no holes there. So no water goes through the intake on the L21 because they have a very, very different cooling system. They may look very, very similar and they may basically be a small block Chevy, but they are di indeed different. And that's probably one of the reasons why when GM decided to do these guys right here and they took the water from the back, it was to fix that issue with the rear cylinders running hotter than the front. Now, there's a lot of varied opinions on this. They make these necks that go right here and you can take both of these guys either right here, right here, or take them right to the neck. A lot of guys think that these necks bypass the thermostat. That is not true. A thermostat goes higher and you do not want to bypass the thermostat. And the reason why is because if you bypass a the thermostat, then you will have a whole bunch of water flowing all the time to your radiator. And there's a chance that your motor may never get warm enough to open 
that thermostat. Because if you guys ever experimented with your like thermostats to make it run cooler, if you just put a hole, kind of like a little small hole the size of, you know, that in your thermostat, I've had my car run so cool that the thermostat never opened just by putting a small little drill hole in the thermostat back in the past like that. So these 6AN lines, I guarantee you it's plenty to get this guy up here. And some guys are saying like, you know, well, this going in here, this going up, you know, they're gonna block each other. Uh, that's not, I don't think that's how stuff works. When this opens up, all the pressure is gonna pull all this out this way. Cause this water's always gonna go the least path of resistance. Less resistance to go here to there, less resistance to go here. So when that's pumping, it's just gonna pull that guy out. And if that little thing was true about pressures in here, there's a whole bunch of holes in here, different pressures of water flows all in your head to make it all its way through your motor. Now that can't be true. So I, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna work just fine. So that's my opinion on varied opinions that the internet says. So that is pretty much the progress on the 400 small block Chevy. I don't want to bolt the intake down yet because I want to get the spacer and the nitrous plate off of that guy over there. Make sure that when I put it on here, nothing's blocking. So I don't want to bolt this guy until I can verify that. Cause if I got to pour it on this and pull it off, that's going to suck. I'm not going to put the uh, rockers or the push rods in there and set my lash and the lifters until I actually put the intake on. Cause it really does not take long at all to, uh, drop some push rods and lifters in there and your rockers and set the lash. I've been doing that so many years, it's pretty much second nature. But you know, my day job work has kind of sped up a little bit. So I might not be putting out as much updates as I used to, but I'm definitely gonna put them out. This guy is definitely gonna go in. So if you guys wanna know when this guy goes in, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. So whenever I have another video, you can get the bell to know that I'm making progress in this guy because I'm pretty excited to put this guy in. But like I said, you know, when my day job comes first, gotta make that money. So until next time guys, keep wrenching and peace.